Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. June 5th, 2022, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me carry. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of the Determined Length, episode number 650, halfway to 700 and 600. Oh, boy. That's a lot of shows. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, also, um... I gotta say, uh, why are you guys copying me in the shirt that you're wearing? I mean, isn't that oh kind of God. rude? I mean, really. Why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, who wore it first? Do we even know? I mean, I'm going to have to say you, but that's because uh, you ordered the shirts for us. Actually, <laughs> unless I, oh, I received wait, it Damon? first because I know I received it before you, you, Damon, and I posted a picture when I received it, right? So I don't know if Gary received one before I did and then tried it on, like I did. Um, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I technical details, I, 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 will, I will put it like this I know it wasn't me. Because I literally just put this shirt on just now for the first time. <laughs> so, like, just... you did get it and you didn't, like, try it on? No. What's this shirt that we got, Gary? What's what's so special about this shirt that we're all wearing? <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking and I can't find it when you post the picture. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, disappearing. It doesn't matter. Um, so... Yes, uh, we are celebrating uh, still, because it was earlier this year, <laughs> um, the 10 year anniversary of Cubs Out Loud, TNG, the next generation of hosts. And uh, now that it is the month of May and they have been sent out for um, nearly all of them, because I'm still waiting to hear back from someone, um, the patrons who got the t shirt reward. They got a lovely Cubs Out Loud Next Gen t-shirt that we all happen to be wearing as well. Celebrating from 2012 to 2022. Yay! And I love your uh, not that great uh, rendition of the Next Generation theme that you were doing, Damon. Yeah. yeah. I'm not calling yeah. it bad, just... It's called, it was, okay, it was, I did it from fucking it okay. memory. Thank you very much. That was that was totally improv. I have not listened to that song in years. So he's also probably trying to not get us get a strike. Our dad too. <laughs> I, 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 I did, yeah, it was definitely not good enough to get a strike. Thank you. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. We love each other. It's been ten years. <laughs> it hasn't been I ten mean, years. Ten for years me. for Damon and I. Uh, yes. Uh, right. Right. I was just gonna say. Uh, so, mm, yeah, we're, we're getting. Are we getting close to your tenure, Gary? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, hang on. When the hell did I join? Damon, Damon probably sorry. Do a quick search. Uh -huh. That's what he normally. Does. I was episode one ninety five. That was my very first one okay, when I was a guest, on. and that was January of 2013. Oh, okay. So next year. Right. All right. Oh. But that's the re basically the restart of Cubs Out Loud, because we were off for about a half a year, six months, I think. Uh, and even by that, there was several months before that where we kind of slowed down because my other co-host said, 
decided that they needed to go do uh, other things. I'm right. just going to leave it at that. I don't know if it's better or not. Maybe it was. Yeah, there was a, a hiatus from May of 2011 till March of 2012. So, oh, we'll see. and yeah, it was, well, yeah, like three quarters, something like that. And then yeah. uh, we had a series of the TNGs, like getting things um, started up. So, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. But yeah, so uh, this is this is what we're celebrating. We're quite happy about it. And so we're all matching today in our lovely um, TNG shirt option that you may see every now and then. Um, and we were thinking about uh, making these available through our Zazzle store uh, for general folks, a uh, slight modification because these um, make reference to Patreon, but we can uh, do that if folks are interested. Yeah. So let us know. Let us know. But happy anniversary, y'all. Doot, doot. With that. Uh, with that, I think it's about time to get into this one. So we're five days into the next month, but. Uh, we were off last week because of, of Memorial Day weekend, uh, but we are back. So we're talking about the month of May and we'll probably spill into to July here because a couple things happened for me and that includes, oh, yay, hiring spree. <laughs> I can't imagine how that feels for someone who is in charge of are responsible for training new hires. I mean, I bet, I bet it's just wonderful. Oh yes, it's absolutely David says sarcastically thrilling, <laughs> and it's the best I can ever do. And so, um, yeah, so we've been kind of on a hiring spree, which means more people coming in, and then also the fact that these people, in order to get them get them onboarded into the building uh we they need computers and getting them computers or laptops uh it, it, because right now we're still doing the remote process for onboarding mm -hmm. people so there's that <laughs> Which um, I think a lot of companies that that had folks work from home have pivoted to that or continued that on, which does make sense to me that they are like, oh, this is a cost saving measure. You don't have to come on site like you don't need to be here. You can spend one, two, three, four, five days going through all the boring AF nauseating PowerPoints and videos <laughs> and like. Here's our HIPAA compliance. Here's our sexual harassment. Here's our like you yeah. Know, just... So, I mean, to be to be fair for those, they can access because we're vendors. We're not. We're not actually right. Uh, for the job we're doing, we're not actually employees of the company we're doing it for. We're uh, the employed by a vendor who's doing it for them, but they need uh, the motherships, as we refer to them. Um, uh, equipment to do the job mm -hmm. uh, but all of the our stuff we they technically can just do on their own home computer they just need to be able to log into our company website and there are certain things they can do so they can do that as long as they have a computer then the one thing that really bugs me is those people for who for some reason I personally don't understand this probably because I've never been in a situation where uh, I didn't have one of these. They don't have a home computer. They have tablets and they have phones, but they don't have an actual home computer. Like a, even just like a cheapo $100 Chromebook. Mm -hmm. And it drives me insane. It's like, why don't you have like, it doesn't even have to be an expensive computer. <laughs> if you could do it on a tablet and things, you might want to. Sometimes it's nice to have a keyboard, right? Um, so, I mean, I suppose if you had like a, a one of those Surface tablets, which you can, uh, which you just attach a keyboard and it's practically like a full Windows machine at that point, mm -hmm. that I could could kind of 
go on, but that's kind of like a pseudo laptop. So, and those are probably a little bit more expensive than when you could get a like a cheapo one hundred dollar Chromebook, and it works great for those people who just want to use the web essentially. Right. Um, oh. So when they don't have that, accessing our company website is a bitch. So. Oh. Uh, but if they have their own home computer, it's not as much of a problem. Then those people who all they use is Wi-Fi and they don't have an Ethernet connection because so that we have a good strong connection because you need those. And then our company website just doesn't suit, like to work properly. And things mm-hmm. are, are down. They need to take a training, but every time they try to launch the training, it says, oops. And they can't access the training to do the training. So, uh, and then, uh, we got the great news of, Hey, for the next two months, June and July, we're doing a hybrid model. And then we're like, Oh, that's kind of cool. And then as we are about to start the hybrid model, they say, Hey, everybody due to a certain COVID-19 scare, uh, everybody's going to stay home for two weeks. And then I have to train people from home for two weeks. And when during the hybrid, it was like, if they are training in my class, they will be on site. I will Mm. make them exempt from the hybrid and they will have to be here, mainly because it is a lot easier and better if I can train them in person. Mm -hmm. And and I I gave my boss says, yeah, that's good. That's fine. Mm. And then we get get uh, people in classes who. (laughs) yes so people there's a thing about password they're important you Mm -hmm. should remember them heck all security people will tell you not to but write them down if you don't remember them you're not good at remembering them uh then you get locked out, can't log in. You ha- When you did get logged in, you didn't set up your secret questions so you can reset your own password. So then you, we have to escalate it up to some of our experts in order to get a ticket open for you to to uh, uh, reset your ah. password. And then, and then by the time you can even get in, you, we've already hit your payday. So instead of getting a nice old direct deposit, you have the paper check sent to you. Because you didn't log in and update your banking details. Mm. And then it also is two weeks later when we actually do some real, the real training for the real job, which is really my job on that. And you haven't even started all your mandatory training. And two, at least two of those, those mandatory trainings, if you don't get done, they will lock you out of your timesheet. So you can't update your timesheet to get accurate pay. <laughs> Well, that's fun. Wow. He says sarcastically. <laughs> and then uh, because of all the influx of people, we need to kind of like move people along, but I can't move them to the, to the step after mine until they've completed all their mandatory trainings. Although I would have preferred that they not be passed to me until they've completed all their mandatory trainings. They've got all the automatics things done. <laughs> All the, right. all the, the company's website stuff done. All the all the actual onboarding stuff on. That's supposed to be week one. Then me week two, we talk about the actual job. And then I push them into our, our nesting phase. That's that's the goal. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. It, it yeah. sounds often like a vicious cycle. Well, I've got people who are that's all like... done with everything. And they're ready for my my phase. But I've got people still that still haven't completed all their their mandatory trainings. Part of it being they can't even get into the trainings because they keep getting this stupid error. Yeah. So, training frustration. Genu- yeah. I'm genuinely surprised. Or maybe not. Never mind. I'm trying to go. I mean, I'm realizing when Damon trained for jobs that were like in his company, it was way back 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 in the day um where 
I'm not saying their security wasn't a thing, but like it was, you know, not the high high point that it kind of come, becomes now. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one of the things that they used to have, and they don't have it anymore, but um, we had lap like not laptops, but like desktop set set up in our um, HR area that were kind of, for lack of a better phrase, like general use. Mm-hmm. I don't think they had like names and passwords associated with them. I don't think they were, I think they were maybe locked, but not like you had to put in your, you know, username and password. Was general and password. Them. Yeah, it was something general or whatever. And then um, you could go through, like look through anything that was like training um, uh, our, like, you needed to be on top of like every year we have to do all this like code of conduct and review all these things, those kind of things. And you could do it just sitting there at this laptop and go through it kind of thing. I cannot, but again, like I said, that was, that was several years ago before all of this, you know, we all, we all went home and all of those things where security kind of becomes key because you're not, in the secure, you know, quote unquote building, you know, you're not in the building where everything is already connected to like the local stuff and you can, it doesn't go beyond that most of the time. So I can see where that the frustration comes in where, well, in order for you to get in to access our stuff where you are, which is remotely, we need to have all of this stuff set up. But if you can't do that, then we're kind of going backwards and before we can go forwards because we didn't have to give all of these things access to you. And if you like you're saying, if you don't do it by a certain point or you don't do certain things, then we're kind of or you forget your password or you don't create a password or whatever, all the things that are going on, it becomes this like cluster fuckery. Mm-hmm. Of of um, wasted time. Yeah, I mean it, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, but you know, there's not. I mean, there's not much. I can't not to be mean. There's not much you can do about it, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just venting my frustrations. That's yeah, I just it, right. uh, God, I can't stand that. I, I would oh. And the worst part would be is if you are like in your in the case of your position, you kind of they bring someone into your room or into your area to start the training, and they can't do anything. Then why did you bring them here? Yeah, it, like, it, was the well, point? here's the thing: is is for for access to our clients' stuff, mm-hmm. everything's a okay. The actual our actual company's stuff. Not so much. That's yeah. that's where the problem is. So they could like go and actually do the job, but they have to get all these other onboarding things for for the company who's actually paying them before mm-hmm. uh, we can get it. Uh, much less the fact that the iOS version of the uh, timesheet app that that they have is not working. Mm. We we have to update the timesheet the way they don't want us to do it, which is through the website. Uh, mm. Which is also another uh, frustration, and every time I I look on our our little like our 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 company app store, I keep seeing people add in one star reviews saying it's not working, it's not loading. I'm like, eh, hopefully they get that fixed. Right. But yeah. So that's uh, and other than that, um, uh. uh playing Final Fantasy, but been, I'm also having some internet, uh, weird internet issues where my games would keep get, getting disconnected. Fortunately, looking at today's broadcast today, we haven't had any frame drops, so my uh, streaming's working fine. It's, it's other things that are not. <laughs> and I, I can watch videos perfectly fine it's 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 a quality thing uh with certain things such as an mmo mm. uh, and just constantly being disconnected um 
it's kind of it's really annoying so i it's, oh. it's been a month of annoyances i'm working <laughs> at home constant like rolling eyes emoji <laughs> Uh, it it's more uh, of uh, pulling out hair emoji. I don't know if mm. the 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 red angry face. I suppose I don't know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyways, that's that. That's me, Damon. Um. Yay. So. Uh, to kind of pivot a bit in regards to things. Um, Jim and I have started looking at uh, wedding venues um, for next year. Hmm. So, as you know, we got engaged back in February um, at NAB. Um, it took us a little bit, but we finally have got it gotten gotten. We finally started looking um, at a couple of places. Um, it was funny. We reached out to a few. And didn't hear anything for a while. And then f- we were now hearing from places. Um, uh, the second one we went to, we had sent an email out asking, you know, availability, whatever. And on a Monday or Tuesday, we suddenly got an email like, we can't wait to see you at one o'clock. And we're like, um, it's noon on the same day. Well, well, we were like, whatever. Like, we we kind of wanted to see it anyway, so we went. Um, thank heavens for Damon having a salary job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can just, like, step away for a little while. But we went and saw it. I mean, the, the, the venues are very wonderful. It's been, it's been great going through and kind of, like, discussing options and what to do and what we want to do. Um, we have not yet set a date. We have an idea of a date, Mm -hmm. but the official date has not been set. Um, We're going to obviously wait until we can actually, you know, set it. We decide on the venue and make a choice. Our options currently that we want to are open. So we're, we have one more place to look at next weekend. And um, we've gotten a few other, we had, we were talking with friends yesterday and we may have another place we're gonna, or a couple of, a couple of places that we may want to look at, but we're gonna kind of like get an idea of them all online online. Um, to kind of pivot, pivot, talk about it a little more. It is interesting going through this process. Um, for those that are looking about this, this is not cheap by any way, shape, or form. Um, <laughs> it is not. Um, and especially considering for us the number of guests we're going to have, um, potentially it is not going to be um, a quick and easy, like, oh, drop in a bucket money. No, no, it's not. Uh, so there's that. Um, right. Yeah. And, and I will say this, um, I think it was on NPR in the past month, there was a reference to how much the cost of weddings mm-hmm. has increased since the pandemic. Like just the, the general cost of a wedding. And I was yeah. like, Ugh. I was like, yeah, that's I like think, it's like sticker think, shock. Yeah. Cause I think some places are trying to recoup because there was a year or two where they couldn't have them at all. Mm. Um, but whatever, like we're, and you know, it's funny to me, FYI, everybody, peak wedding season is May through October. I did not expect it to go that far into the year, but <laughs> May through October, at least here in, in Cincinnati, is May through October. Maybe a November wedding. Have you thought about Jim dressing up as Santa Claus like for the <laughs> wedding? <laughs> no. And during, uh, it during the holiday season? Like, oh. No. I mean, he could just uh, come straight from a gig and, you know, yeah, just get bang, it bang, boom, knock it out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, mm, no. Um, Here, here's my entire wedding plans if that ever happens for me. We go to the courthouse, we sign a ticket, and that's about it. That's, yeah. That, 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 I, that's the extent I, of my, 
my and, wedding plans, I I do not want to do the whole kit and caboodle. And Jeff, trust. Yeah, is that on the but, table? I, is that I, again, is that, that's, am, I, am I hearing between the, between the things not being okay? So said? so that's like an option. Yeah, you're, a, you're, yeah, you're just you're, you're looking at your options for the bigger thing to celebrate with their friends and family. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could also do the whole thing. You, you, you just do the wedding at the courthouse, have a couple people for witnesses, and then you just have get a venue for a party for a reception at some later time. I was just discussing this with somebody Maybe. and I can't remember who. It's still expensive. I can't remember who I was talking to. We were having this talk about like a destination wedding. Um, and <laughs> that's like, a way to cut people out. Well, well, right. That's exactly what I said. I said a coworker of mine did it in my old career. Um, they announced they were having a wedding in Hawaii. And I was like, Hawaii. I was like, wow. I was like, it's going to cost some money. And they said, exactly. And I kind of looked at it for a second. I was like, wait, did you intentionally pick some place so people wouldn't go? And they were like, well, we want a small affair. We don't want the whole world showing up. And we're going to have a big shindig celebration reception afterwards. And so they did. They went to Hawaii. There was about eight of them, I think, in the whole party. Bride, groom, a couple of family members got married on the beach. Fabulous, gorgeous photos. It, I'm sure it was a lovely affair. And then about six, eight weeks later, they had a big shindig in town. And rented right a hall and bing, bang, boom, had a big ass party. And I was like, got it. And so I've told people that. I was like, you could do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's your wedding. Right, right, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. And which and is one of the reasons like, why I'm like, like, I'm just going to do courthouse, couple of wits, and it says bing, bang, boom, wedding done. We'll have a party sometime. Yeah. And so. if you wanted to, you could make the reception a really big affair and have the wedding be really like low key. So, like, you know, you could, you and Jim could go to Vegas and get married in a chapel, not with an Elvis impersonator anymore, apparently. But, anyways. Uh, <gasps> really? They're not doing that anymore? <laughs> That's weird. Oh, you haven't seen it in the news? There's a company that's like taking them to a uh, lawsuit for intellectual property rates or something. Copy, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it's some people are pissed off about it. Everybody they... knows they're not Elvis. They just impersonated right. him. So it's <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, like you could, you know, you just do a little, you know, and be <laughs> legally married, and then you know you could have a whole party, but you could have like a, you know, lead off. Uh, kind of little ceremony deal you know it's not legal but it's us exchanging some you know quick vows and this and that and you know mm. you could have the whole you could possibly have you know a good portion if not the whole except for you the gay man's chorus show up and like do a number um you could have some drag you could have a theater thing you have some <laughs> improv this is why i'm not in charge of your wedding gig because like i was <laughs> i get a big fucking deal anyways never mind yeah, moving if on you want to do big fucking deal might be a good idea to, to look into wedding planners yeah and look okay. into it. i'm not saying to do yeah. it again it's your wedding you do you right um yeah so this is the thing so it's been a thing and it's been very fun it's also been a little like like you said gary it's been very sticker shock like oh okay David's like, I have a house. I don't need a second house, aka a wedding. <laughs> yeah. Bill. Yeah. Mm-mm. See, the, the appropriate no. animation that or, or appropriate like visual that you're trying to do is one of those like uh, uh calculators with the printed receipt and you're going <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is it is it is it's been again, we've only gone to a few, but um it's been rather interesting. And I'm looking, we will, again, we'll make a decision. Um, you know, it's, it'll be, and like you said, Jeff, it would be our decision based on what we want to do. Yeah. 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 So. I just um, like picking on you regarding everything. Yeah. Well, it's taken us almost 20 years to do this. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing. <laughs> hey, right, right, right. That's and one thing I've thing. been constantly picking you up. <laughs> Not that I think any of these people would listen to this podcast, but I'm going to put this out there right now. If you decide to come with criticism about whatever decisions that David and Jim make, fuck off. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not your it's not your affair. It's not your pocketbook. So, like, just just shut your mouth and be grateful for what it is, because I've known people that have had events in fire halls at like local uh, parks with shelters 
um, in, you know, rental, actual spaces, wedding venues, alternate options. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I've known people who have decided for a wedding or whatever, they're like, you know what, I, we know that everybody wants to get us gifts and we don't really want gifts, but if you feel compelled that you want to do something, we have created a fund and this fund is paying for the shit that we need. And it's not a house and it's not pots and pans. It's not a bread maker. It's not an ice cream maker. It's not a blender. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, honestly, probably the best gifts to ever give people at our wedding is just money. Yes, absolutely. That part. It it, it is literally, (laughs) it is literally the best gift because you don't have to uh, think about it. You, You give them, it's like, and all of a sudden, they've got three or four toasters. Mama. They probably already okay. have a toaster anyways. That's working perfectly fine. They don't need another one or a fancier one. It's just, they, they've right. already equipped their house. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. You know, yeah. if this was like they were doing it before they went and got a house, eh, maybe. Mm-hmm. But yeah. probably the better yeah. thing, just give money. Maybe they'll take it. They'll go on a trip. They yeah. have to enjoy themselves or they might get some other things or, you know, if they make enough money, pay down on their mortgage. Yeah. Jim, Jim and I that do not need any more. That would be an amazing gift, by the way. We we do not need, we, we, do, we don't need any more stuff. <laughs> we barely got room for the stuff we have. So. Well, I, I mean, you know, friends of mine were very smart about it. They were like, we don't really want gifts. Like we want, we want your participation we want your friendship we want your love so if you want to do anything you can come and share in the event with us and if you feel so compelled to want to give us money a gift card to either i think it was lowe's or the home depot will be greatly appreciated because they knew they were going to be doing some home stuff and so you know right so here you go you start adding up them gift cards to very specific places you're kind of like oh okay I got a little coin now. I can afford to get this thing done or whatever. And, and if, they, right. if there's a registry, registry, specifically buy from the registry, because usually web, registry websites, if somebody has already purchased it, they won't let you purchase another. Yeah. They'll, so, or they'll, and they'll take it off the list as people are purchasing things. Yes. Right. So all of that fun stuff. Yay. Um, wedding. Woo. Um, I mean, It'll when happen. in doubt, just just get just get a, a demon in a nice dress. Um, <laughs> no. So, um, in addition to to that, um, so over Memorial Day weekend, uh, so surprise for the first time in a while, um, Jim and I are actually we're actually both free and able to travel um, somewhere for Memorial Day weekend. So we decided to go to Nashville. Um, we were going to go to visit friends, um, that we haven't, I had in the chorus and they've moved to Nashville recently, but <laughs> as luck would have it, they're actually coming here to spend Memorial Day weekend, um, uh, in the, their home state and home area. And they were coming, they were basically, they went, they came here and then traveled back, um, and like made stops along the way to visit family and hang out and have friends, you know, you know, whatever. But we decided to go anyway. Um, if you saw my Facebook, um, we did a lot of wonderful things. The um, National Museum of African American Music was mm. amazing. Oh my God, I could I could spend. I know we were there for a few hours, and I could have been there all day. Um, well, maybe not. It was it was very interesting, and. Um, educational and inspiring and everything but there are like it's very interactive there are little um, areas that have like music and it it goes like it'll you can start with one person and go through like influences and and past and presence and 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 um um like people who are on that same like level like uh what do they call them not partners, associates, I think, maybe that's not the word, but you know, it kind of like, you can go through all this pattern and you can end up with like somewhere in the future. So um, I don't quite, not future, but current, Mm -hmm. Um, like Beyonce, go back down to, Beyonce was influenced by 
Whitney Houston, who was influenced by this art, um, Shaka Khan, who was influenced by, mm-hmm. you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you can kind of just go forward and backwards through this list of, of different musicians. And they were these kiosks, basically, with these, you had headphones, you can listen to their music and just go around it forever. I was a little mad because the one of the first ones I wanted to listen to, there was um, the first rooms was um, gospel music and um, soul music. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> there are only four of these kiosks. And I was in that room for, I want to say 30 minutes because that's where my musical roots come from. And these four people were sitting, were standing at these kiosks and they stood there the whole goddamn time. Mm. And I can understand why, because it, 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 it's a journey. You can go right. around and find, and you would give, again, you could spend several minutes doing it. But I was like, I really want somebody to like step away from this because I kind of want to go through it. And eventually they never did. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to move on because I, <laughs> I had been standing and walking around this room and kind of waiting uh, for them to move on and they didn't. So, right. But again, um, it's, it was a great experience. I really enjoyed myself there. Um, we then on, uh, we, we ate a lot of great food. Oh, so much food. So good food. So expensive food. I will also add that. <laughs> um, uh, and then we went to the Parthenon on Sunday. So if you know Nashville, Nashville has a replica of the Greek Parthenon. Um, and uh, inside it is an actual art museum. So we spent time going through that and um, going to the Centennial Park, which was which is where the parking lot is. So it was a it was a great trip. Um, I'll definitely go back to Nashville again, hopefully with our friends, and we could actually you know spend time with them um, and enjoy the it. In Nashville? Yes, the Grand Ole Opry is in Nashville. We didn't like there are there's the Grand Ole Opry, there's uh, Ryman Auditorium, there's the Country Music Hall of Fame. I think there's the Country Music Museum. Yeah, there's lots to do in Nashville. So if you do find yourself there, you will not be bored. Um, There's always going to be something going on. Um, One thing we did do, which is kind of more gay related, uh, we went to play in Nashville. We went to the drag bar there. Saw some... um, Varying um, drag talent there, um, local drag talent. Um, overall, a great show. Um, but it was it was very interesting going to this venue. It's much smaller than I was expecting it to be, but mm. it was it was it was entertaining, and they used that space, or did they use that space and? The, the the girls that were on the stage um, knew what they were doing and seemed to be having a good time. But there are some queens that um, need a little more polish and some that need to amp up their game. Mm. Okay. In the sense that maybe... The stuff you were, you could do years ago, maybe you shouldn't be doing now mm-hmm. or wearing now. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But having said that, overall, May was pretty good. Um, well, get into we'll see what June holds because it's Pride Month. I'm gonna be busy. Lord. What about you, Gary? Um up, down, sideways, and all around, baby. Uh May was a busy month. But when I look back on it, I'm like, but what was it busy with? And I mm. think it was just a lot of small things. 
Um, when it came to work, um, I had two bigger things towards the end of the month, the in annual HIV AIDS awareness walk. Um, we did, we did it on a weekend. Well, it used to be in the fall, late summer to fall. Now we moved it up to the spring. Um, we did it on a Saturday. We normally did it midweek. Um, so that was a big deal to like move it and all that stuff. Um, it was a beautiful day. It was hot. Mm. Um, and which is ironic because it's May. So we weren't expecting it to be hot. <laughs> like we think of June, July, August is hot. So yeah, that was interesting. And then it thunderstormed later that evening. And like, this is what I talk about by hot, like the thunderstorm, the storm front knocked the temperature, air temperature down by at least 15 degrees. Mm. Like, so it was one of those like lovely muggy kind of hots. Um, mm. But it, it was, it was good. It was a smaller turnout than, than I kind of hoped for. But then again, the heat could have been an issue you know, for the weather. Um, there was a big arts festival that same day, which of course, what am I going to do about that? So, mm -hmm. and then I traveled to our state's capital because I am now uh, with work part of the statewide HIV planning group, um, which is uh, approximately 80 some people, both from the state and from communities that work together towards a multi-year initiative plan. So that was a, a good, fun and experience. I got to travel for the first time for work in years. I got to stay at a hotel for work for uh, in a couple of years. I got hit on by the guy at the front desk when I checked in. Oh, for the first time that ever happened. <laughs> well, look at you. Well, I wasn't doing anything to try for that. In fact, I called a friend of mine. I was like, you used to work in hospitality. This thing just happened to me. And they were like, so you're going to hook up? I was like, that is not the point. The point <laughs> is that I got hit on. And I've never been hit on by someone at the front desk when checking in. But... So the question becomes, Mr. Gary, mm -hmm. well, maybe we'll wait until after the show. Maybe that's a post-show question. Post-show? Okay, post that's fine. Um, so yeah, no, it was busy. <laughs> and then I went straight from there pretty much to into holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. And had a very nice, enjoyable holiday weekend to get away. Um, and it's funny, I think friends. you were here, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love how like, I left and like everyone came here. Like my friend Shane came here from Nashville and you were here. And I was just like, well, hell. Anyway. Yeah, no, we, um, we, uh, I ended up there and had a nice uh, weekend. We went to Taste of Cincinnati, which is a good fun event. Um, enjoyed that. Uh, got to see a fun local uh, funk band um, play. And uh, had some good food. Uh, my recommendation for arts and festivals, whatever it is that you're going to be going to this year, if you can, I think your best bet is to go at the beginning. Mm. Especially if it's a if it's a very longer event, because the more the people get out, the more crowded it's going to get, and the more they're probably going to piss your ass off. I'm just saying. I don't know how else to say it. I think I think the pandemic, unfortunately, like it, it like. Uh, I think it took away like uh, like the courtesy factor of people and crowds and like personal space and Lord, anyways. I know that's just that's just a rough estimate. So sorry, that was nice. <laughs> Not to caveat, but like so, if you know Nashville, there's Broadway, mm -hmm. and that place is jumping from like eight in the morning until like three a.m. at night. Um, the um, museum, the Na National African American Museum, um, Music Museum, um, uh, sorry, National Museum of African American Music, there we go, um, is on Broadway. Mm -hmm. So in order to get to it, we had to go and park in this area, and we had to walk from where we parked, eventually finding a place to park, um, to get there. I don't understand <laughs> how people can be partying at noon. <laughs> and by when I when I say party, I mean like you are already drunk and loud. Mm -hmm. Could never understand it, but I can see that happening. Like I can see that happening at Taste of Cincinnati. Our Oktoberfest that's here, and it's why I tend to them. 
No, I mean, it was, but that was the thing. We were all talking about it because we were there right at the opening at 11 a.m. And then we were there till probably about two in the afternoon. So we were there for about three hours, um, you know, sat, ate some good food, had some drink and all that. But ultimately we were like, yep, the crowd's getting denser and we're happy to leave because we had to go mm-hmm. anyways. Um, and I was like, you could not pay me to be here at dinner time. Oh, no. Lord, no. No, no. Just just too much craziness. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it was it was just a lot of things uh, over the course of the month. And yeah, uh, so and now we're now we're here and it's a new month. Ta-da! And you know what new months mean? It means new feedback. <laughs> Gary, what's been nice happening? Segue. Over the nice segue. Nice <laughs> segue. I don't know what's happened, but uh, we got a, a whole bunch of likes on Facebook. Uh-huh. I don't either. Did, Are you was sarcastic? it because last month we got a call from a certain someone? I don't know. That that could very well be, uh, mm-hmm. perhaps. So we would like to thank the following people for liking us on Facebook. Mark E. Johnson, Sterling Aragon, Robert Bruce, Mike Guzman, Joseph Thompson, Mark D. Rogers, Richard Humphreys, Carlos Perez, Donnie Lockwood, Robert Prasner, Jason Bolton Lambert, Harry Wright, Ruben Rios, Bow Bow Lai, or Lay, Damian Leahy, Louis Labella, Jim Baker, Brad Savage, Pedraza Jr. Rodolfo, James Deal Steen, Rennie Thomas, Mauro Jimenez, Stephen Remensing, Hassan Solomon, Jonathan A. Crockett, Colin Ashton, Colonzo. <laughs> Gonzalo Sauce and Peter Stevenson. And Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the most people we've ever like thanked for likes on anything ever. Yay. Well, thank you, thank you, you guys. For, thank you for liking us. Welcome to the entourage. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's like 28. It's almost 30 people just on Facebook. Wow. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. Damon? Speaking of being long-winded. <laughs> what happened over on <laughs> YouTube? Woo, y'all. So, we got, so, again, we got some comments. So, first of all, thank you to um, our new YouTube subscriber, SP Riley 2 mm-hmm. um, Yay. And then we got some comments on our episodes, uh, particularly, uh, so, CO 647, which was consent in 2022. Um, Owen said, uh, Jeff, uh, we can blame this on, we can, our quote, Jeff, we can blame this all on millennial and me. What did I do? Um, <laughs> yes. I believe I explained <laughs> myself during that episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I do? What did I do? Anyway. That was funny. And then, uh, also on COL 647, which was our consent episode, Bertie Burfrey left a very detailed comment. Um, and it reads as follows. You probably cover this in the show, but I believe the effect of social media on Gen Y and even worse still Gen Z has not been a positive one. Consent or permission is absent from the younger generations and they are having an impact in daily life. It's the quote, better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission, end quote, motto of Gen Z, which is so much fun right up until you have kids and then they use it on you. Gen Z especially speak and act as though they are living permanently in a comment section using terrible grammar, telling, and appealing diction, appalling diction. They speak in an unfiltered manner with such strong conviction that their opinion is the only one that that shit should be heard. It's not their fault, however, perhaps any generation that had, in certain circumstances, unrestricted access to incredible amount, incredible amounts of information and disinformation all at once in an easily discussable format, all at the touch of your fingertips, would end up exactly the same. As mm-hmm. well as, um, that's a question. Ooh, anyway. <sighs> Slow down, David. As well as the boldening of people's opinions, many are far less tolerant and far too sensitive than years past. PC, now wokeness, has gone haywire and there is becoming less and less room for discourse. Internet pseudoscience runs rampant in the minds of the young 
who are armed only with opinions and feelings whilst denying facts. Rant over saws. Mm. So this is a lot to take in. <laughs> um, and I have to disagree. Uh, I believe all of that was really written in the back in my day old man voice. Maybe. Mm. I don't I don't know you, Bertie. Um but um I, I I think he has a lot of the older generation looking on the newer generation and being appalled with things because they don't agree <laughs> with the generation. It's like me me blaming things on millennials. It's Maybe. it's there's a there's there's the the I don't know the I don't know if it's a majority or a, a minority, but one of the two is spoils a bunch. You know, one rotten apple spoils a bunch sort of yeah. sort of thing. Mm. There's all but, these people that are doing things that are annoying to older generations. That is that is uh, basically giving the generation a bad name. To get to my point. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing I was mostly disagreeing with him about is the consent and younger generations. Um, personally, through mm. my recent interactions, especially within the, within the letter community and key communities, consent is kind of at the forefront of their minds and it becomes a major part of how they handle things and deal with things. Mm. They, they ask for consent um, often. Uh, they don't just assume or beg for forgiveness later. They in a lot of ways are at the forefront of this sort of consent movement mm. where it's my body and I get to do with it as I choose. Right. Um, and you do not get the autonomy on my body. So those are, those kind of things is where I'm kind of having my disagreement on with regards to the statement. Um, yeah. I, I think part of that is because, because like he was saying that, they have more information at their fingertips because of the internets. Uh, and I think in, in the leather and kink communities, consent is a major thing that they, that they communicate and form mm -hmm. about. It's those that are outside where there's more problem. I do think it's, it's about uh, the population, I guess, subset. Mm -hmm. That there could be differences amongst different, you know, age generations as to how they hold themselves and what they do. Um, I, I mean, I find it interesting that they're they're talking about how the technology and like the the progress the progressiveness. I don't think it's the uh -huh. right word I'm looking for. The the difference in generations and the changing of times. My grandparents' generation is definitively different than the current like young adult generation, and it's also multiple generations removed. So I, I think it's interesting that they're trying, I think, to say, like, as each generation comes, some of the things that used to be considered, I guess, the the social mores or ways that you handle yourself are changing. And it's potentially not necessarily f uh, always a positive thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's, a, it's a delicate dance, I think, because, like, mm -hmm. there is a part of me that says – Absolutely, you know, there are younger generations that are far more outspoken than ever before. Mm -hmm. And without being outspoken, you don't get things accomplished. On the right. flip side of that, I think it's well pointed out that, like, they're not necessarily um, perhaps taking account of the stated things that are out there. And it's more like internalized, like, things that are being expressed. AKA opinions, feelings, but not so much about like the facts that are out there and this yeah. whole concept, you know, that there are, you know, uh, fake news and, you know, debate, debatable facts. Mm -hmm. And it's kind I'll of like, facts. right. It's kind of like, well, mm. not sure quite, you know, how, how we go about that. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, we're also lacking, unfortunately, as an American society, the skills, the abilities to give people uh, the knowledge of how things are mm. supposed to be consent. Like I was just 
in a conversation recently. Sorry, I'm thinking about this. I was in a meeting and someone mentioned that they were at a function with other um, men, presuming uh, same gender loving, all male Mm -hmm. identifying, and that somebody put their hand down someone else's pants. I'm looking at David's face, right? And I was like, and immediately, while this person's telling the story, I said, wait, without consent? Like, I called it out immediately because I was trying to bring to light as an opportunity for people to understand, like, there's a time and a place. Mm -hmm. And what we were discussing is, is about there was a couple who recently moved back to the area and they are, uh, I think, in certain circles known very relatively decently to be uh, in an open relationship, an open sexual relationship, I should say. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a person who was younger than them, probably by two generations, that was a witness to some behavior. And my comment was, if they're not aware of the dynamics of that sexual relationship between that married couple, they might be misunderstanding what the mm-hmm. behavior is that's being exhibited. Like they might be thinking that like, you know, this is strange or odd or like it's breaking the, the bounds of their marriage or whatever. I'm like, so that's kind of why I was having this discussion about like, you know, the consent factor. Cause I was like, because th- like the person who's witnessing it may not be aware and in a way may not be consenting to what they're witnessing yet. The parties that are involved may be consenting. It gets a little murky. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was like, there's, there's mm. a lot more about this on a whole other plane to be discussed. And that was not the point of the conversation. So I just kind of like, whoo, like interjected this whole thing. And I was like, I gotta be careful about that. But at the same time, I wanted people to be aware, like, hello, right. like, right. you know, pe- people need to know that they have the right in any moment to draw attention to something, to talk about it, to have a conversation and to change. Mm-hmm. Just because you start something doesn't mean you have to finish it. So you could totally be like, you know what? This isn't working for me. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know if I showed because I can't see. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, so anyways, that's yeah, that's some of that. All right. So next comment on COL 645, which was our Let's Talk About Sex uh, Aging Adult Entertainers. Mm-hmm. Um, Jonathan said, hi, guys. I'm terribly sad to re- about Paul Reed Yinger, a.k.a. Steve Tipperg. Whew. Tit Pig Hurley passing away as he was one of my favorite adult performers, a strong manly man who never disappointed on screen. Like you, I often wonder about other performers who are no longer present on screen and who I have this snapshot of in my brain, but who haven't performed in a long time now. I especially think about Will West and Ed Diamond, who specialize in bareback porn. There's a hot scene with Tip Peg and Will West in a movie called Wild Will West Raw. There's then there's Paul Morgan who did both gay and straight porn and was a prolific performer before vanishing. I guess I just wanted to know that these guys are out there, happy and healthy, and when they leave the movie scene and aren't heard of again, it's imp- almost impossible to know. Anyhow, great show, and thanks for making mention of Mr. Yinger and raising the topic about aging adult entertainers. Yeah. Um, it, it was, I mean, I, I appreciate the topic, um, Gary, and we did have a good conversation about it. So I do, it is something that you have to start. I think we, you know, as we're getting older, that we have to start thinking about as well. You know, it's, you know, life doesn't live in a bubble. Um, but there's also that, like, these people are, we have a bubble, because this is on a video of a moment in time that was taken, maybe if, you know, maybe they did it over a few days, whatever, but, like, it captures the moment. I was looking the other day at, um, I'll, I'll, I'll share it. So California Bears, mm-hmm. which was one of the first porns I ever watched, is, I think, over, t- is going to be turning 20 years old. Mm-hmm. So it's just the things you, I'm like, oh, I mean, it just suddenly I realized that I'm looking at, because it, you know, Bear Films, if you remember, they used to like, so like, you know, around the times they would film it in the, in the, in the beginning or somewhere at the end. And I was looking at this one and I was like, oh, wow, that's 20 years ago. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Right. And I think one of the things that's difficult in terms of adult entertainment when it's been recorded is that we do get this weird time capsule effect, but we don't see it that way. So, like, we're looking at this film, this video, this recording, and we're kind of like, oh, this is hot. And he looks good. You know, and then you might have that moment where you're kind of like, wait a minute. That was like a half a lifetime ago. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you're not really quite sure about where things are and, and what's going on. And unless you're in a circle of some kind where you might have a first, second or third connection to somebody in that industry, you might really not know who they are today, what they look like, how they identify, mm-hmm. like what their life is like, any of that kind of stuff. So right. yeah, it, it, um, it can definitely be something, you know, of a, I guess a mind bender for some people, you know, unless yeah. you're in tune with that. Mm. And then finally on um, COL 649, which was our landscape of relationships, red flags, green flags episode, Owen replied, Hey, so I had a question. I don't know if Ed will ever read this, but to the host, what would the social protocol be if you want to use the word, quote unquote, sir, in like a courtesy type manner while addressing a person who also happens to be in the bear? And then he put in parentheses, leather slash BDSM slash insert other category here community. Um, so I can talk, try to talk briefly about this. Depending on the, the context matters. I'll put it like that. Mm-hmm. Context especially matters. If you are in a bear leather kink i'll use bear leather and kink because those are the ones i know more like and you use sir um in most cases if depending on how you're using it is going to determine how it is you know responded to if you are using it in the polite you know southern whatever vernacular of like excuse me sir. sir or thank you sir what have you then of course i think people overall are going to generally respond in the polite and kind way. Um, now, having said that, um, there are people in our community, and we will just give them a general term called assholes, who will <laughs> take those, take moments like that and p- take them out of proportion mm. of what they are intended to be. If you are being cordial, and respectful in the general overall politeness sense that is the extent of that sir and no one is going to fault you for calling someone sir um in those in those contexts again these assholes however may take advantage of that or use that as a reason to put on some kind of platform or show of how they are alphas or sirs or whatever and take it into the not so kind direction if you are in that moment get out if you can and if you i mean if you can't then understand that everything will fall into consent if they and if they choose to continue to say anything to you that you're not interested in or not wanting to do or don't want any part of, then you should be able to be like, no, thank you. I appreciate, but I'm, I'm declining. Right. I think you're right, Damon, in terms of like, you know, the, it's, it's really about intent, but also the audience and the circumstance, the environment. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say this, I struggle with like capital S versus small S, sir. Uh-huh. Because in my brain, grammatically, I always think of sir as a capitalized word because it's a like honorific. Uh-huh. Like it's it's and you and you recognize the other individual as like someone of importance because of their skill, their education, their maturity, whatever it may be. Yeah. But I do know like in leather kink, um BDSM communities, there is a distinction between capital S and lower S because it is like, is this person your? sir or someone's sir Mm -hmm. um and it may be part of how they're recognized Mm -hmm. and if you're not in that scene like how do you navigate that um yeah and then so i think it it is interesting that you bring that up i mean i think in reality it's more about just asking the person if they're okay with that 
or, mm-hmm. or more importantly, that they tell you if they're not okay with it, mm-hmm. which is kind of like Damon, you saying about the consent thing, you know? So like, if I'm not okay with someone referring to me as something then I, it's on me to tell them that. Yeah. Like to tell them, actually, I'm not okay with you saying that, or you don't have to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, what I, I wish I could find it, but it's going to, it would take me a while to look for it, but there is a, there's a meme out there of, um, just because you are a sir doesn't mean that you're my sir, to put it mm. in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because reality is, especially in the kink community, if you have earned that title, earned that title, I'll put all that in quotes, that is only in the dyna- dynamic that is present. So if I am in a di- relationship with you and you have insisted that I call you sir, that's how it works in that dynamic. Mm-hmm. And again, where no matter where you are, you should maybe be calling, that's the way you would address that person. But that person who you're calling sir should not expect everyone else that's around them to call them sir. Right. Quick question. Sure. Just just to see if we can find a a way to kind of easily make a distinction of this because I said <laughs> I think I got the distinction. I'm trying to make a good analogy to it. But if you say the word sir in the same context where you could also just say ma'am would that pretty much be kind of a uh be like a like the casual manner like thank you ma'am or thank you sir that sort of thing or because i don't know the feminine version of sir capital s hmm mm. so, um I'm not familiar. This is me trying to get information. Uh, yeah, 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 more. yeah, yeah. So, um, like, would would it be more per, like would the op, would the feminine version of sir be madam, or is yeah. it? Yeah. So, in certain because if you just say ma'am, which basically is a dropping of the d and putting an apostrophe, and lowercase, um, yeah, lowercase. But yeah, so. Uh, yeah, mm. I would say I I wouldn't generalize it to that point where it's the, if you switch out the masculine with feminine, it's more of a in context. You're more doing it. You're, you're, no, you're you're doing it to be polite. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the context. So. If someone offers you something and you say thank you, sir, like are, you know, you know, that's kind of the being polite. That is the context. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, and this is this is the the difficulty. So this kind of goes back to Bertie's earlier comment about the changing of generations and how we relate to each other. What would help is if when we meet people, we introduce ourselves and we say things like, and especially in corporate culture, there's a lot of discussion about using pronouns mm-hmm. as a part of your situation. So like I do a lot of online like webinar educational stuff that I, I witness um, and sometimes I partake in them. Like, you know, and you get, in, you're asked to introduce yourself. And so like there's someone I'm thinking of right now that's a part of a thing that I, I often see and every single time they're on, they have they have it down. They're like, my name is so and so. I go by like this, that, you know, as pronouns, and they just keep moving on. Like it's just and it makes it so easy to know how you reference to a person. And I think the same thing could be said to titles or honorifics. Like, how do you relate to a person? But if that doesn't occur, then yes, it does it does make a lot of question marks appear around you. Like, mm-hmm. am I gonna say the wrong thing? Like, and you wanna be polite and you're trying not to offend and you don't yeah. know how to do that. And I hate to say this, but I'm gonna borrow from Miss Tammy. If they're an ass hat, they're an ass hat. And it doesn't matter what you say, because they're just <laughs> they're yeah. gonna be a jerk about it. Like yeah. and there's yeah. no winning that, you know. So like to to kind of not complicate but complicate your 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 question, Jeff. Um if you 
say it in like the way you've been saying it, Mm -hmm. unless they are an asshat, they're going to be okay with it. So if you were like, if, okay, okay, fine. We'll do, we'll do role play in this moment. You're at a leather bar and you are, um, in the line for the bathroom and right in front of you is a big burly man with a, a leather a vest on and he's got a, a big like the mer cap on and everything else has the one wristband yada 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 um the the urinal opens up and he doesn't move and you go past him and you say Excuse me, sir. And he will you and you'll go past him. If he's like every most people we would hope to be, nothing will happen. He'll just go, okay, and you know, move on. If he's an asshat or an asshole or whatever, he may have some words to say with you. I mean, at that point, I mean you're going to get pissed on you if you do that to me. Because if you, if you, and then, because I just need to piss. <laughs> so, like, if you are like, hey, hey, whatever, I, I'm not going to pay attention to you because I'm going to the bathroom. And if you text me, then we're going to have a problem. And that's when you'll get pissed on your shoes. Because um, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm in this moment. So, and you had, ample time to 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 do this so unless you're like looking at yourself in the mirror and didn't notice that the urinal was open but again that's not my problem i gave you the polite gesture and moved on i think <laughs> i think that the difficulty is i know for me personally um and probably because of a circumstance that happened when I was younger, um, I think I was like maybe 11. I think this was after my parents' divorce. My grandmother wrote a letter to my mother and it came in the mail. Um, and my mother was in tears after reading the letter and we had a conversation. And she was upset because my grandmother basically called her out in this letter and told her that she was a bad parent because we would had a birthday party for me. And we had family over, and apparently as a as a child, um, about 10 or 11, I'm guessing, I didn't thank anybody for my birthday presents. And my grandmother thought that was just unbelievable. And so she told my mother, in straight, very straightforward terms, because that's the way she was, she was like, I think that was like a failure of this child being raised, that they can't be polite to say thank you to people. Damn. Well... Damn. <laughs> but it had it had the impact that it needed to. Like, not necessarily did I appreciate my mother, you know, getting being the brunt of that. Um, but like I've carried that forward all of my life and I try to remember to thank people for things. I hold doors open for people. Like I just do stuff to be nice because that's really kind of what I think my grandmother was trying to say is don't don't have an ungrateful child. Don't have a child that like just takes things for granted in this world. And, you know, thinks just because you have a birthday party, oh, obviously you're going to get presents and you don't need to thank anybody for that. It's like, actually, no, they don't have to give you a present. How about that? <laughs> so, so like that really stuck with me, but it was a lesson to be learned. It's not a, a, an, an innate thing necessarily that people know that it's a, it's an exhibited behavior that you learn from other people. So now as an adult out of habit, I will say, sir or ma'am. Unless I'm really familiar with you and I know kind of like that, I don't have to do that. But otherwise, like I will hold doors open and I will, you know, um, you know, like when I answer the phone at work, uh, you know, depending on who the person is, you know, if like you see the caller ID come in. So I know who it is. And I usually say hi. And then I insert their first name or whatever. But sometimes I will say, you know, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Like. It's just what I do, like, you know, and if. But I've had some people who have actually said to me, they're like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, what? Not at, not at this current job in previous career. They would be like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, and I actually <laughs> would make it more awkward for them because I would say, because it's polite. 
and th- then you could see them like be uncomfortable because either they're not used to it or right they, they apparently didn't consider that as a possibility yeah or whatever yeah, and it's like light. and at that point it's like maybe it's on you it's not on me like that that's your discomfort not mine like i was i was being nice yeah did whatever so, anyways so, so that's your that. extremely complicated answer to your question <laughs> It depends on the context. That's basically. Yeah, to, yeah, to be to to simplify it, it's context. Context hope, is important. Moving, moving on to our Twitter followers, we'd like to thank the following people for following: uh, Marius, is a son. Four, uh, Jason K, twelve twenty seven, uh, Cubby J Kev, Jeremy Cub. Underscore Astrum, Astrum, Astrum. I don't know. Um, and we also got a message saying, uh, "Need some advice." My guy, my guy wants to have the threesome. Not sure if I'm interested right now. How should I talk to him? You say, "Oh, I mean, well, so this is really more of a question for our uh, resident sex therapist." But I would say, "Hey, we need to talk." And actually, well. Have so a, a, uh, sit down and have a conversation to give my co-host some easy, background still. this came to me and i said do you mind if we discuss this on the show anonymously to, to leave out that's why there's no name or anything um because i i wanted to know what your perspectives were on this yeah i mean it it really is a conversation if you're not sure you're gonna have to it may be difficult to, to approach it or I don't know how you would necessarily bring it up. I don't know the dynamic in your relationship, right. but it is something where you have to sit down and actually communicate. And right. it's not necessarily going to be easy. It may be, maybe you have a great communicative thing. Again, I don't know your relationship, mm-hmm. but uh, just you, you got to talk about it. If you're not sure, it's pretty much at that point, hold off until you actually make that decision. Air and A. It's defaults to yeah. know. Yeah. So to kind of pee back on what Jeff's saying, yes, communication is key. Communication is important. Have that conversation, even though it's probably going to be a difficult one, because first of all, you need to know where this is coming from. Mm-hmm. Is it's an interest in just exploring things sexually where you maybe you you you're not doing things that they are looking or are interested in doing. Are they wanting to bring someone in to kind of like find like a balance or what have you for the sake of a sexual moment, not necessarily a relationship thing. Let's mm-hmm. let's also get that. Let's not get that twisted. Mm-hmm. Um, and then have that conversation and then make a decision based on that conversation. But you mm-hmm. don't have to make the decision immediately. Agree. You, you never. If you, you have the conversation. You get all the information. Like, maybe it's who do you want to have the threesome with, and then it's uh-huh. can be in like, hey, I'm not interested in having a threesome with this guy, you know, or it'd be like, yeah. hey, that would be maybe that would end up being hot. I know there's a couple I know of that I would love to have a threesome with. Yeah. Um, and fortunately, I know they would love to have a threesome with me, but. Um, despite the fact that we're also several thousand miles apart. Um, <laughs> uh, it, that's something where it's been communicated. Everything has to be communicated and everybody has to be in agreement. You can't just be one or one of mm, yeah. or two of three, you know? Yeah. It's not yeah. a majority rule situation. All have exactly. to consent. I mean, we have... <laughs> Have a prop. Right, right, sure right. Coming through. Kind of. Well anyway, um, so yes. So in regards to finishing having the conversation and making the decision, is that the if the decision is decided that it's not going to happen, then it shouldn't happen. Mm. We, it may also lead to another conversation. If the threesome's not going to happen, maybe. It's something where he still wants to play with this person, maybe exactly. in a one-on-one situation. So it can get more complicated. Again, we're yeah. talking about it could be difficult. Yeah. Also, we're not professional 
therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but this is I don't just think our general advice. I don't and nothing I, professional. Yeah. But also again, um, to whoever you are, um, make the decision that you're comfortable with. Don't do something because you feel your partner wants to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Don't, don't, don't comp. No, I'm, I'm don't compromise. You can try to compromise if you think you could potentially be comfortable with it. But since this is a threesome and it specifically says threesome, then you are involved. Yeah. Now how the, ex yeah, the extent of your involvement may be, I, you know, lay there and watch or sit there and watch while you two go at it. If that's what you decide to do mm -hmm. or, you're all, you know, engaged and what have you. Um, know your limits. Um, and um, as we've kind of mentioned several times before, consent is key. And as we've also mentioned several times before, consent can be revoked at any time. So if you're involved in this moment and things are going and you suddenly realize that you don't want to do this, then you can stop it. And if your partner is understanding and respectful of you and your choices, they will, they should stop as well. Mm -hmm. And again, it may be an awkward moment for the third person that's being involved in this, but it could very easily be a, you know, well, I, I've changed my mind and I don't think I want to do this. Okay, well, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, third person. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to postpone quote unquote this for now. And then you can, guys can then come back together and have a conversation and maybe decide on, talk about what happened and see if this is again, something that you three or two really want to do. Mm -hmm. I, I also think also happen like like you might be like, mm, actually, after having the conversation, I am interested. And if it happens, just also keep open that possibility that if in the midst you decide to back out, decide what you between the two of you, what you want to, to happen, because it could just be you back out. They continue on their own if that's OK with you again, if that's OK with you, you got to use a lot of eyes. Right. I, so I think both of you give some really good feedback on, on this. There, there's a couple things that stand out to me. So one of them is when you say not sure if I'm interested right now. So there's two things in that. Not sure says you don't know yourself on where you stand about this. Uh -huh. So it makes it difficult to help you figure out how to have a conversation about this because of your uncertainty. So I think that's Fair. something that needs to be considered and worked on. Why are you unsure? Why are you uncertain that you want to do this or you're interested in? Is it the person? Is it the is it the third? Is it the dynamic? Is it something with you and your partner? Is it that you don't know why your partner wants to do it? Like there's I hate to say it's 20 questions, but there's there's much more I think to be figured out about that. I also Fair. noticed that you said right now, which makes it seem like you might be open to this, but this current circumstance in time is not ideal. So maybe you think like, you know what? We got a lot going on in our lives right now. This is not something I want on the plate. Like I'm going to pass. So, and that's something you should hopefully be able to discuss with your partner. I think both of you, uh, Damon and Jeff bring up some excellent points. Um, it really is about like having an open conversation. Uh, one of the things I want to say was like, you know, if you do make the decision, you have the third, the third I would hope is made aware of the circumstances. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Don't leave them in the dark. Let them know, like, this is something that we together as a couple have decided. And this is like kind of what we're looking at it from. We also want you to know that we may decide to stop. And you have to have this conversation with your partner that we both have like the power in the moment to say, you know what, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't want to continue. And then figure out where to go from there. It doesn't mean it's a full stop. Uh -huh. You know, it might be, you know what, I'm going to tap out. I'm just going to sit over here and watch. Or I'm going to go in the other room. 
or uh, let's go back to the kitchen and like make a drink and have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and not continue this activity. Who knows? Like, it, 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 there's so much that could be said and done about that. Um, but I want to thank you for reaching out and asking the question about, like, what do I do? And this really came to me initially as I've never dealt with this before, so I'm, I don't know how to proceed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't know that for certain because I didn't quite ask that question. I just kind of took it, copy pasted it. Um, but I, I think that those are some really good things. And I think – if you're interested, since this person asked and I know that they're a listener, um, I would say this. If you want to, we do have Ed's information um, from his episodes. You, I think he would be more than happy to have a conversation with you as, as brief as it could be um, mm -hmm. to just help you sort of figure out some ways to handle this beyond us. If you want um, someone who has some credentials, um, you know. Recently He's made a, a doctor. Right. <laughs> um, and is a licensed professional therapist right now with couples and things. Um, could provide some insight. I'm not saying that we're not uh, able to give you any answers. I think what we gave you was a lot of stuff to think about. And how you proceed through that is, is important and up to you. But you might want to consider um, talking with somebody uh, other than us about that. Just because we, we can only so much. Use all we said as inspiration. And you can take none of it if you wish. Right. Exactly. So that's the best we can do, sadly. Good deal. Not sadly. It's just the best we can do. I mean, if one of us was a uh, licensed therapist, we might be able to give more. At the end of the day, he still could not yeah. take the information. Yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah. Go ahead. There you have it. And yeah, that's uh, it for that, uh, Gary. We would like to thank a few people for uh, giving us money every month. <laughs> we do. Donating money. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, no. Uh, for those of you that may not be aware, if this is like one of the first episodes you're listening to, hey, hi. Um, so we have this thing that we've been doing for uh, th over three years now on what's called Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, uh, patreon.com, where you can become a patron of what it is that we do here. And from a dollar or more a month, you can make as a as a gift, charity, donation, whatever you want to consider it, a uh, gift in kind to us. And um, these individuals we want to thank because they have joined us at uh, one of three tiers. Um, so we're giving big uh, bear cub hugs to our patrons on the Cubster level, Charles W. Uh, for our Ubers, Dave T, Lee, Michael Q, and Tim S. Plus our buddies, uh, which are Lloyd G, Michael V, and Zach B. So their donations actually make a couple things possible. The biggest of which is that they help pay for the server, domain, rental, like kind of tech side of things. We've used the money over the years to upgrade different equipment and things. Um, and there are various rewards that you get uh, for some of them. Um, they're going to be receiving soon in the mail. I know it's a little delayed. Uh, some different items like uh, stickery type things. But most of the folks who were do T-shirts um, got back to me with their address. So they got they should have gotten their T-shirt about the same time that we did in the past couple of weeks. So thank you. We appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so so gary tell us uh give us a review of what we did over the past month um like we were talking about from some of the feedback that we got so uh in the past month we had five shows four of which we recorded uh quote unquote recently slash live col 646 was what's going on uh for the month of april um, in which we discussed <laughs> what happened in that month. Um, and then CML 647, um, we discussed consent in 2022. So we were having this very conversation about what consent means in the modern age. And we've talked about consent a lot through the, the course of this podcast over the past recent years, but um, we kind of talked about it today and how it relates to people's behaviors and social media and like just perceptual things. I mean, the reason why it kind of came back around was just like, uh, we need to, I think, revisit things, especially given how the world has changed because of the pandemic. I think it really has touched everybody's lives and it has altered some, some of the ways we do things. 
Then we did a uh, Serial 648 where we talked about voting in 2022 because you better vote. Uh, here in the U.S., we have primaries and an election coming up. And I know that a lot of people typically only vote every four years in the U.S. when the presidential election's up. But there is so much stuff that's coming up that we really need to be aware and engaged. Governorships, mayorships, local councils, um, statewide referendums, all of these things become laws that uh, affect us. And right now, the way things are going with the Supreme Court, the, it appears the current uh, mindset in the decisions are leaning towards the states make the decisions, not the federal government. And ergo, like who you put in as your state senator at your state House of Representatives, as your state governor, those things can have big impacts on your accessibility to funds, to things that affect people's lives. Um, they're uh, what's considered a right or uh, a privilege. Um, those kind of things. So keep that in mind. And then uh, the last episode we did two weeks ago, live was COL 649, Landscape of Relationships. Mr. Sorry, Dr. Edward Angelini Cook uh, joined us and we discussed red flags and green flags, which I thought was a good conversation about what to be aware of, what to watch out for. Um, things that, you know, are basically like should be stops and things that should be goes uh, in a relationship, how to uh, recognize them. Mm -hmm. And then last week, uh, we did a flashback episode, uh, but I forgot how many <laughs> years previous it was. Um, it was nine years, right? Yeah. So it was May of 2013, yes. called A Life-Altering Experience. Um, so it was a fun little jaunt um, while some of us, uh, while we were pretty much all on holiday weekend for you guys to go back and listen to a previous episode. Hmm. And strangely enough, I got the uh, Patreon posted the the that Sunday and the uh, everybody else on Monday. So I was proud of myself. Ooh. I actually did did the work earlier. Nice. Normally, um, I end up doing it on Monday when I normally do. This time, right. I, I got it the day of. And uh, for those that aren't aware, there are just a couple more items before we get into cool down uh, for us. I oh, wanted to make way. sure. Oh, by the way. Uh, we wanted to make sure that people were aware. Our previous guest, Paul Lanner, who is the creator of uh, Haunters Against Hate, um, has been on. He's a great guy, um, and he's been involved in the bear community for a number of years now. Worked with Adam uh, with um, North American Bear and World Bear Weekend. He, he has. A funny guy. And a, he is a funny guy, um, mm -hmm. even if he is a little creepy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what that's that how he's kind of funny. Fit. He, um, he has an event coming up soon and would love to see people there. It's the HAA The Event. So if you visit HAHTheEvent.com um, for info and support. Um, this is the thing that I, I love about Paul. His heart is so big and passionate about what he does. Um, and I get it because you drive yourself crazy, like trying to get the details and pull something together. Um, and I know that he is like – probably killing himself, not not physically, but like really pushing himself um, on this. So for folks that haven't heard it or seen our previous episodes, Haunters Against Hate is a nonprofit that was uh, formed as a way to address hateful speech that was being made in the haunt community. That's H-A-U-N-T. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, haunts are places that you go to to be scared intentionally. So like haunted houses, um, they can be haunt events, uh, and they usually happen in the fall season for, in the U.S. around Halloween. Um, and the Orlando Pulse massacre was used by at least one, if not a couple of haunts soon after as a way to scare people. Um, and it was a horrific event. People died. And so the context of using that was something that Paul was just like, Absolutely not. So he reached out to owners of different haunts and they created HAH, the Haunters Against Hate. Um, and over the five years, they've had T-shirt design sales. He's had books. Um, they've raised over $35,000 for LGBTQ plus youth organizations across the U.S. Um, and we're just really um, proud of what he's done. And so if you have the ability to go to his event that's coming up uh, July 8th through the 10th in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, Please do so. Um, it's kind of like a con or a convention um, with a lot of folks. Um, I'm super excited for him. He's got big celebrities that are coming, uh, that are going to be speaking. Um, he's really in the haunt world. These are actors who have been in movies and television shows. The, the people that he knows and that he gets to see, he knows Elvira. I mean, how much more gay and haunt can you get? 
<laughs> um, true. So yeah, like I, I'm just I'm I'm so happy and excited for him. Um, you know that he gets to see people this year specifically uh, Judith O'Day and Russell Steiner, or sorry Streiner, uh, from Night of the Living Dead. Yes, the Night of the Living Dead. Um, like the are original be there. Line, Living Dead or the newer like original? The original black and white. Oh wow! Um, and Brandon Crane from Stephen King's It is also expected to be there, and Michael o. Hughes from Pet Cemetery. And Wes Craven's new nightmare. This is what I'm talking about. Like this man is like really getting some some big names and stuff. I'm super excited for him. So please uh, consider that. And if you can't go, like you could make a little donation. Like you could buy a shirt, buy a book, uh, you know, reach out to Paul and be like, hey, can I just throw a 20 your way? He'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, remember when we had a previous guest by the name of Joshua Pangborn uh, from Side I think he was Production? on my uh birthday episode last year yeah um uh, so i think there were a couple of people that were missing on that episode i can't remember but josh was there for sure yeah yeah um so he uh, has helped put together with his production company sidekick productions an award-winning series called skeleton crew which we've talked about in the past well he is now underway with a new project and he's putting together a film called a taste of youth and there is a fundraising campaign that has been launched on Indiegogo. So if you would like to help be supportive of queer horror and fat positivity, you can visit a taste of youth.com to see uh, how you can help uh, with this horror feature and make it happen. The links will be uh, posted on our blog uh, for this particular episode. So you can go through um, to see what these different items we're talking about, but um, they have a, a goal. They just launched it uh, a little while ago, um, but they're working to, to make this thing happen. So if you are interested to um, put some money towards it, um, they they got a lot of stuff. He explains like a cinematographer, sound person, actors, rentals of studios, costume sets, you name it. Like that's what all this money is going towards. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and, you know, he's he's done some good stuff. And so I'm happy for him. So if you want to help with that. But you know the uh, second place winner of The Voice season one, Nikia. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he's he's helping out with this movie too. Good. Mm. So you're yeah. gonna you're gonna probably it because uh, knowing Josh, there's probably gonna be some music in there, and guess who's gonna be help rating that? Gee, I can't imagine. Also, uh, he, he Nikki is also his co-host on his uh, what is it, Psycho Productions. Dueling pianos? No, not just dueling pianos. That their podcast. Oh. oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So yeah. Hmm. So I think that means we're ready for cool down topics. All right. So it's time for this. <laughs> Enough of that. All right, so uh, I'm going to start off uh, with one that I found just pre-show, uh, which I find uh, very impressive. It's oh. called, I call, I'm calling it, That Was Intense. Uh, oh. His actual thing is, when I say my orgasms are intense. Wow. And it's this mm -hmm. uh, beautiful, chubby black man having... It's an intense orgasm, and he's he's definitely a shooter. I was gonna say he's got rage, yeah, <laughs> like going right over his shoulder. Wow, oh, hold on. <laughs> God, I have, well, I have to do I have to do fucking tags. <laughs> no, here's my favorites. Here's some of the responses that people have had to this tweet. Damn, oof, holy shit, <laughs> goddamn, damn, babe. I mean, yeah. Well, that was an outer body experience orgasm. <laughs> Come I, I, Fest 2000. Yeah. Well, one person did say, damn, I need you in my life. So, yeah. Yep. There's a lot of dams in there. Oh. I mean, it is impressive. Um, um, he's, it's, I'm, Ooh. I'm just. I'm, I mean, the video is only three seconds long. It's such a gif. Yeah, it's just rather 
again, intense is the perfect word. I would give it that much. Cause I'm looking, but I'm looking at him and I'm like, wow, there's a, there's, there's muscles like, you know, spasming. You can see that. And, um, uh, he is, I'm, I'm hoping he enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I don't know what uh, I, I'm assuming he's a, one of those. Ha ha. That was good. Sort of loopy yeah. boots right afterwards. Um, I don't know what his, um, uh, what may what what was what was the cause of this you know satisfactory release, um, but like he, based I, off I, of the the imagery, it seems to be uh, he he was finishing a mass with masturbation. I'm not sure if there was anything that happened beforehand or if there's anybody else been in the room. Because all we see is him, so yeah. there's only assumptions I can make. Yeah. Jesus. He if this is, is high fructose uh, God, porn syrup it. on Twitter, uh, <laughs> his, his uh, ID was at True Slutty Prude. My favorite thing about his Twitter, when you go to his profile, it says, I shoot big loads and smile a lot. <laughs> <laughs> to the point. Ooh. So, yeah, big, pretty cool. Cute. Hold on. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let me switch I did not get a chance to. Uh, hello. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I'm just now. I'm I'm looking at his pictures, and I'm just like, oh. Oh. Well, you I... can look at them later after the show. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Hush. Uh, shut up. <laughs> So for me, um, I chose a picture that's actually, um, it's not R-rated. Um, yeah. You mean, mean X-rated? Or X-rated, sure, sure, right. Um, or both. And it's called, yeah. Uh, but it's from um, at Dylan Thinks 87 and it is, um, I called it part of your world. Um, but it is a great photo of I'm I'm assuming Dylan um in a pool and it's just it's just a great capture um backlit in water underwater you've got the bubbles being escaping from the lips kind of moment and it it's it's just really really it's a great great well taken photograph I don't know if this was just like with someone's camera or camera phone yeah, or. I, I kind of wish they. Had yeah. Put it the the, the work way. Uh, I don't this mind is, it this way. Yeah, I. I, kinda I mean, like it. It, it's good. It's great. I, I just would like yeah. the bottom of the pool to be on the bottom yeah. <laughs> instead of on the side. Instead of on the side. I think I think it's amazing. Like, I mean, it's it, an it's amazing a, picture. It's, it's it's just it would be just a little bit better, but turning it. Right. Oh, and I'm the one with OCD. So I, I I hear what Jeff's saying about like, but I think the composition is just amazing, and I love yeah. that that Dylan says, "Alexa, play part of your world." Like, right? You know, from the Little Mermaid from Disney. But I, I think it's 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 just so nice. Like, it is a beautiful I, picture. I'm yeah. just like, it's mesmerizing. And the fact that it's 90 degrees sideways is really intriguing because on the right, you've got the underwater surface and how it mm -hmm. ripples. And so yeah. like, it's kind of distorting. It's, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah. Like it almost looks like it's special effects. Right. So, but I, but I, I, I think it's pretty authentic. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it too. It would be better for 90 degrees. That's it. Jerry, just turn your monitor. Anyways. <laughs> Sadly, the monitor I'm viewing this on doesn't turn that way. And, it, and, the, and I couldn't do that on my phone because every time I turn it, it would just turn the picture. Right. Right. Gary. Um, I called mine. Sunsets are beautiful to watch. Mm. Uh, the rest of it, the rest of it says, join me next time. Um, uh, and... I don't see the sun. I see the moon. 
Jeff sees a moon. I see a moon. I don't see a sun. I mean, I'm assuming it's in the distance. Well, no, not even in the distance. It's off to the... It's to the left. Yeah, it's to the left. Right. right, it is kind of comical because they're like, sunsets are beautiful to watch, but if you're looking at the composition of the photo and where their head's positioned, it's not looking towards the sun or the sunset back on the left. It's like going off to the right. So maybe they're not really caring much about the sunset. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Anyways, this person um, is on a deck, uh, possibly at vacation, not really sure what the context is, but they are in their birthday suit, and they are bent over, leaning on the railing, Um, so their uh, voluptuous derriere is on display. And they're boss. Um, Yes, and and pendulous (laughs) balls. Um, I just really loved this, like, it, 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 uh tickled me when it came across my timeline as I was scrolling. I was like, well, I was like, well, would you look at that? Um, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. I just, yeah. I liked it. Um, uh, so, I liked much on that peach. Yeah. So, uh, and they've got quite a few likes for it. So I'm very happy mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are like, uh, love when the moon rises, I'd be naked with you. Um, <laughs> better in the, in the full moonlight though. Right. Um, I love to watch the moon rise. Moon rise. <laughs> yeah. Funny, I don't see the sun, but I do see the moon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of peach emojis and stuff. It was. It's a good photo. Ass. Very beautiful. Nom 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 nom. Oh God. <laughs> moon, not Gary. Uh, ah. what, what's your link for the day? Uh, so my picks are, uh, for the past month, uh, Netflix stranger things season four, part one has released. Mm-hmm. If you've watched anything of stranger things and you're interested in it, uh, I really, and if, especially if you've got away, like if you only watched the first season or the first two seasons and didn't see season three, I really suggest you come back and watch four, um, or get caught up. Part one is amazing. Um, the Duffer brothers have seven episodes if i remember correctly they are all over an hour long if not an hour 20 hour 30 like they're long episodes the entire first part of the season i think is equivalent to watching over nine hours of content Mm. um it's a lot people binged it i did i did binge it but i split it out over several days because i was like I'm, i'm not losing that much of my life so it's I wanted, like you're watching like instead of uh tv shows like short movies right right exactly um and there's gonna I don't be a mean part shorts that... i'm talking about like feature length right no, no you know like shorter feature length films um and there's gonna be a part two coming out in july so uh here's what you need to know about season four this isn't a spoiler um mm-hmm. how the main character l or 11 um ends up where they are and 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 explains the beginning of the things that are happening in Hawkins that all happens in part 1 um mm. and then uh there are some great cameos um the whole series is split into four quadrants so there are four pockets of people in different places doing different things um but the presumption is in part 2 they'll all end up coming back together so you've got people out of the country. You've got people halfway across the, across the U.S. Um, you got all sorts of things going on. Um, so it's it's uh, unless you've seen it, I really feel like I can't talk to anybody about it. But it's it was it was mm-hmm. good. It was so good. Um, and I'm very intrigued to see what's going to happen. Uh, there's speculation that some people aren't going to make it. Um, so mm. and this is uh, so season four is two parts. Part one, part two, they're releasing them in chunks. And then uh, I don't know if they finished principal photography for season five or not. And it's going to be the final season. Um, I think they might actually have finished principal photography for season five. Now they think about it, because I think the two main actors um, who play uh, Will and Eleven talked about how like everybody had a big like crying session. Uh, mm. when, they, when they filmed their last scene, um, if I remember correctly. So it's, it's, it's a pretty wild ride. But if you love 80s like horror, 
sci-fi fantasy type stuff. There are so many Easter eggs and homages. Um, D and D is a big factor. Uh, mm-hmm. And it takes, it originally starts in like 83. We're now in, I think 1986 for the, this year of the season. Um, so there's a lot of like musical context, pop culture. There's a roller rink. There's Aquanet high hair. <laughs> there's Madonna looks. I mean, it's, it is nostalgia, like right in the main line of the vein, baby. Like it's, it's pretty something special. That being said, Disney plus star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Not that. Mm-hmm. You, all I'm going to say is if you like star Wars, go see this series. You don't have to have a whole lot of context for many other things. Cause there will be so much stuff that you won't get that are Easter eggs. That's fine. If you love the very original trilogy that came out 77, 81 and 83, I think those are the right years. Go see this if you can, because 77, 80, 83, 83 with three years part. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's, it's the stuff that dreams are made of in a way. It's, he he was the perfect uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi to, to take on that or take on that role after Alec Guinness. And here's the crazy thing. He's been playing that role for like 20 years now. I know, right? Like that's that's one of the wildest things. Hayden Christensen is back as Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader. Um, I don't want to say anything else. There's some spoiler type things that are going on in the series that I don't want to give away that are really cool. Is is um, is Hayden's acting better in this than it was in episodes one, two, and three? Because from my understanding, Hayden Christensen can be a good actor. It's just. It wasn't yes. really that great in the one, two. Well, three. what's what's wild to me is how like, okay, I'm just gonna make this comment. Mm-hmm. Y'all that are Star Wars fans or fanatics, take a seat. Every intellectual property has these type of people. I'm getting tired of it. Mm-hmm. It's entertainment. It is here for us to enjoy. It's not that serious. So cool your tits. Like, I get it. Like, maybe you don't care for this character development. You don't care for how this is portrayed. You don't like how this was directed. That's fine. But these are real people, and they're just collecting a paycheck for your enjoyment of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And if you don't enjoy it, then stop fucking watching it. And worse yet, do not. I have zero tolerance for this. Do not come for people when they are not your liking. Moses as the third sister is doing a fucking crazy great job of playing a villain. And just because you don't like villains, fuck off. The fact that it is a black villain and you are now being an racist asshole, really fuck off with that shit. The fact that you and McGregor posted on social media telling people if you have a problem with this actor, you are not a Star Wars fan. I, I just watched the trailer before the show and I'm like, oh, that looks cool. Right. I was so, excited. so yeah, there's that like, it's, it's, it's so good. And I'm so frustrated because it is six episodes and I'm like, why, why? I mean, why? they literally call it the limited series I when know, they advertise it. I know, but I am, I am part of the fan base that's really frustrated because I'm like, oh, but Andor can get two seasons. I haven't even seen Andor yet. It's not out yet. But like, this is <laughs> the heart of what everything about this universe exists. And we're only doing six episodes. Like, I but mean, I'm going to trust Ewan McGregor. I'm going to trust Dave Filoni and John Favreau and Kathleen Kennedy that they know what they're doing. But we're already three episodes in, and there's only three episodes left, so I'm just not sure how the rest of this is going to play. I'm hoping it gives people what they want for satisfaction. Um, yes, Obi-Wan and Darth Vader will have lightsaber duels, plural, from what I understand, in the series. So my suggestion, go see it, enjoy it. If you don't give a shit about Star Wars, then don't watch it. Like, it's yes. like I don't think it's going to move you or win you over. <laughs> Damn I mean, culturally, <laughs> culturally speaking, C four, five, and six. That's all I ask. I have so okay for cultural I, to, to, for cultural reference. Yeah. At least see see a new hope at Bird Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I have seen at least once. That's all I ask. 
cultural references. That's that's right. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, I have seen all three. I had to think for a second because the last one I was like, did I see that? Did I actually watch that one? And I'm like, yes, I have memories very, very long ago memories. So I saw these like we're talking years ago. So like when I was much before younger. the special editions, right? Exactly, exactly. Before one, two, and three ever came were 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 even conceived, right? Put it like that. Before uh, 1999, I, when they released re-released all the three, all, right? All exactly. Three. And then the um, I edition. have seen. Um, Did you see uh, the, the, the last first, three? Were... I didn't see the last three. I've seen one of the three. Okay. Of the most one, the most Force recent Wakens. ones that have come out. Yeah, Force Awakens. Force I have Awakens, seen... Last Jedi, and uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I have not seen. I have not seen um, the two. I've seen the first one. I haven't seen the other two. Air trick is better, apparently, so so on. Anyway, um, that's fine. You, uh, I love Star Trek too. Anyway, what? Um, no, like, also. here's the thing. Like, I, I will fully own. When I was a youth, Star Wars was my jam. I was all about it. I even got to be fanatical about it. And then I started growing up and maturing, and I turned into adult, and I checked myself. I like both of the main franchises, Star Trek and Star Wars. Yeah, they're both so equal in my opinion. I'm on Paramount Plus. I'm watching Strange New Worlds, loving the shit out of it. Like, like, it's like you know, insulin. Let me it, let me put a straw in it. Let me has let Picard me that season two down. launched? Yeah, it's already yeah. done. Okay. I, I couldn't remember if they had actually released that yet or not. Uh, Discovery's been out, yeah. Uh, Stranger Worlds, uh, Lower Decks is coming later. Uh, the Prodigy animated with Nickelodeon, which has Janeway from Voyager. It's it's all good. Like, I'm so happy. This is what I want to say, okay, about these two main properties. They seem, seem <laughs> to have gotten their shit together, that they understood. Do you know how you make money? You give the fans what they want. Mm -hmm. That's how you make money. It's that simple. Give them what they want. They will They will buy your merch. They will pay for streaming. They will do these things. They will give you what you want. F weirdly, I think both of those main like uh, franchises, they went in a strange, like they kind of went, they, they veered. They were like, oh, well, we want to tell this story. That's nice. You want to tell that story. Maybe the fans don't want that story or don't give a shit about that story. So like, um, so I think there's been a whole resurgence in those areas about these um, things between Star Trek and Star Wars that I'm, I'm happy about what's happened um, and what's going on. So and, you know, the some might call it a bunch of fan service, but I'm like, you know what? Uh, our demographic is one of the larger demographics currently in the U.S. And we theoretically, minus we inflation, these. have money. <laughs> so like, I mean, Star Trek has been around since the 60s. Yeah. Well, and I'm longer. thinking about like next generation, um, yeah. was a big deal in the, in the eighties to the, to the nineties and 1989 I'm... to whatever seven years later was, they had seven right. seasons, basically, uh, the three main television series, uh, next gen, uh, deep space nine and Voyager all had seven seasons. Yeah. In fact. So I, I recommend that people check these things out that are out there and they, they, you know, hopefully they enjoy them. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Like when I was younger and I was into these kind of things and mm -hmm. nerds, like, you know, you remember that in the eighties, how like, you know, geekdom and fandom, like about like science fiction, fantasy, all of these kind of things, you know, was the outliers. It's so wild to me that we're in the 2020s and it's like everywhere. Like you cannot avoid it. Like, here's, here's an example. I'm at work on Friday. We're having a discussion about doing an event coming up. And we were talking about a dice game. And we were trying to figure out, like, can you only use a six-sided die? And I said, well, or you could use a different die that has more sides. And my, and my coworkers listening to me, I said, I don't know if you're aware of this, but they make them with more sides on them. And I said, like, you could get a 20-sided die. And they said, right, like D&D. And Which this person has also been around since 
Right, right, right. So but this easy. person is more of a sporty person, an outdoors person, mm-hmm. goes canoeing, goes hiking, is not really into science fiction fantasy. So that's what I mean by like how it's become a part of like just the culture that people are aware that these things exist. Because mm-hmm. you don't play Boggle with a 20 sided die. Well, oh, mainly nuts. because I think the dice are trapped inside of a little pop up thing in the middle of the <laughs> board. <laughs> that's not my point. Anyways. Oh my God, it's semantics. A... Bad analogy. We could play Monopoly with the 20 sided die. That would be interesting. Mm. Nice crit roll. You move 20 spaces. You know what? I'm surprised. I'm surprised Monopoly hasn't come out with a D&D themed Monopoly board. They uh, do are have. you sure well, they haven't? <laughs> I know Clue has one. Because we've got it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We've got D&D. Cute. Cute. Okay. Yeah. And anyways, uh, I think that's probably a good place to end the show. Right. All right. With all that, it's uh, been a long show. Uh, but uh, thank you for all for watching and listening. And uh, if you want to contact us, uh, if you need some advice, you got any questions, got any suggestions for uh, episodes you'd like to hear, um, you can do all that by uh, shooting us a message uh, by blog, uh, uh, commenting our blog at uh, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail so we can hear your sexy voice at 361 COL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat at tinyrail.com slash telegram dash col. If you'd like to know when we're planning on recording these, you can check our Google Calendar and subscribe to it over at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements, such as the Comes Out Loud hat. Uh, various Cubs Out Loud shirts uh, over at Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of those designs were designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also uh, become a patron, like the patrons we, we talked about earlier, uh, over at Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. If you'd like to shoot us a little donation, you can send that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can follow us, uh, subscribe to us for by podcast uh, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Amazon, Audible, Spotify, uh, and basically any place you can subscribe to podcasts. You can follow me on the internet as Box Step Box, Poppy Box, Cub Box, something or other, or over on Twitch why, as Windgem, W Y N D G E M, uh, where I sometimes stream Bears and Dragons, which is a bunch of us 3 ass bears sitting around and playing Dungeons and Dragons. Demon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs>